Hello and welcome to the Avalanche Burgundy Brigade podcast. <laughs> How may we serve you today? Today we are talking about the Avalanche Free Agency Primer. <laughs> Getting ready for all the players they're going to bring in, eh? I hit record just as you started this. Oh, shit. <laughs> Guess what's going to stay in before the music starts? <laughs> well, great. <laughs> Get yes. you down to your local Renaissance Fair, and you will get yourself a pint of the nice, nicest mead, <laughs> and a and a drumstick of whatever nearest with the nearest animal we could cook. Oh. Yes, just rip it off the grill and put it in your mouth. It'll <laughs> taste great. I've done like four different accents there. Oh man, awesome! We're starting now. <laughs> that was amazing. Welcome into the Burgundy Brigade podcast, everybody. Uh, <laughs> that was that was a fun way to start things off. Uh, I'm your host, Kevin Goff. You can find me on Twitter at BRG Brigade Kevin. <laughs> Joined by the Renaissance Master himself, Aaron Music at Avalangelist on the on the tw- on the social media. Aaron, man, I don't even need to ask, but how you doing? Uh, feeling rather versatile. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I have four different accents in that one little bit. Were they intentional? <laughs> no. <laughs> Cause that that would get you going somewhere there. If you could do yeah. that on command, man, we'll get you a bunch of voiceover work right here. Yeah, you know that that's the easiest work being a voice actor. <laughs> that's what they say, anyways. I guess <laughs> you've got you've got, like... you've got a face for voice acting. Mm, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, it is coming towards the end of June. We have had. The NHL draft. Uh, we had a lot of podcast centering around that, and that was a lot of fun to do. It's been a very busy month podcast wise for us, much as the busiest it's been in quite a while. So it's amazing what happens when you don't have to teach. It's great. I know, right? Suddenly there's all this time, and you got to do stuff with it, and it's like, well, I'll just make a podcast. Okay, fine. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed those. If not, make sure you take, uh, you make sure you t- get the chance to go back and listen to them uh, so that uh, you can then enjoy them. So we're now just a couple days out from free agency beginning. We're, of course, in what people affectionately refer to as the uh, – <coughs> no, not that. <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. Ugh. As the uh, meddling period where they can uh, go in and everyone goes and talks to everybody and they can, uh, they can agree on contracts even though they're not supposed to agree on contracts and – the little wink, wink, nudge, nudge stuff uh, goes on, and suddenly, you know, they, even though they've never touched, they've never talked contracts. As soon as July first comes around, there's all these complicated, there's all these complicated contracts being signed. It's pretty impressive for guys that aren't talking about contracts yet. Yeah, there's a reason that they call it the legal tampering period. Yeah, exactly right. Now that we're in the into the legal tampering and all that good stuff, uh, we're going to take a look at. Some things that should be that, that we should be keeping an eye on as Avalanche fans going into free agency. We're going to talk about a few guys that we have heard mentioned uh, and discuss their matches with the team. We're going to talk about some folks that you guys are mentioning on uh, social media right now. We're going to talk about some guys that maybe Aaron or I specifically want to look at uh, because it, they fit our own little fancies. And we're also going to maybe. Bring apart, uh, bring about a little bit of uh, dear goodness. We should really stay away from these guys. Uh, so I think initially, initially so I'm going to do a little bit of kill bang Mary with the NHL free agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, why don't we start off with some of the things that we have heard from the Avalanche fans out there that have responded to us before we go through and talk about all these people and. Uh, and, and already knock it off, so knock everything that they've set off. So here's here's kind of the list that we have so far, and you can feel free to uh, mention any ones that I miss. Uh, we had 
Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, Sick Lucit Lux 666. Totally didn't say that right. Says top priority Calvin DeHaan on oh, he's very specific on defense for four years at three point seven to four million per. Uh, I'd like Tobias Reader for three years at two point seven five per. I'd entertain Stastny three years at five point five. Or JVR three years at five point seven. JVR would want six years at six point five per, but Mass Stas wants to stay in the peg, so these won't work out. Well, well, I mean, crazier things have happened. Remember how much how how much Paul Stastny said to the Avalanche? Oh yeah, I'll totally come back and let you guys give me a contract offer uh, during in his on his exit from the Avalanche. Let's just say that anything can happen. Yep. I do like that Tobias Reader. Yeah, that's a very intriguing option right there. I feel like he's kind of Blake Como, but younger. Yeah, a little faster, too. Yeah, it's like if you split the difference between um, Gabriel Bork and Blake Como, you get him. Yeah. I kind of like how you, how you say that. That's not too bad. Uh, Heather at Loves to Ride Horses. Says, well, obviously, since Tavares made the wrong decision, go for Stastny and then sign Miko and Z to extensions. I don't really know. Yes, it. I like you, Heather. That's, yeah, absolutely. Gotta love, gotta get those two squared away. Uh, I don't really know who else is out there, but that's what uh, Casey Avs fan 9 and I have talked about. He may have more input. Oh, and trade Barry for Marner straight up. Hey, if they're willing to take that, I would take it. Yeah, seriously. Uh, let's see here. Ross Klepp. I don't know if you say the extra E there, Ross. Uh, Ross Klepp or Kleppy. Sorry if I butcher your name. This may be unpopular, but how about Vanek? He'll probably come cheap. You can get him on a one-year deal. He gives you a right-handed shoot first option on the second line and second power play unit with Kerfoot. Nah, Pass. Yeah, personally. He's been yeah. passed around to team, to team, to team, to team, to team, to team. Granted, he did have a pretty solid go of it in Columbus. Yeah, but I would say with the playmakers that were there, he was really well set up. Well, then again, he'd be set up here. Yeah, let's say, I mean, we've he got a lot, a lot of folks who love to pass. He has neither of those things. What's that? He has want to go younger and faster, and he <laughs> has neither of those things. You are correct. You are correct. Uh, let's see here. Nathan McRobbed, who is at Brandon... Lovas, I don't know if there's another way you want that said, but anyways, he says, I want Grabner and or Reader avoid Mike Green. I agree on avoiding Mike Green. I also agree on Ryder, but I I avoid Grabner. I'd see, I love the idea of Grabner. He's fast, that's about it. Fast, kills penalties really, really well, and scores. Eh. Guy that He's, with uh, with twelve minutes moves, a night, he, with twelve minutes a night, gets he, nearly thirty goals in, on his season, and that's that's typical for him. Eh, he doesn't move the needle for me. Why? Anyways, uh, <laughs> Mishi at Hardy Hardy Car Car. <laughs> I love that. It says JVR, and yep, I think realistically Calvin DeHaan or Stastny will sign with the Avs. Uh, Ty Lucci at Luch O Nine. Zero nine, I should say. Uh, as much as I would love JT, I don't see him coming here. Too much money. We obviously know at this point that Tavares is not coming to the Avalanche. Uh, the more realistic guy is our man Stasny. Would be a great second line center. Some some guy named Avalangelist says uh, Pat Maroon kind of intrigues me, and I'm sure we'll talk about him. Yeah. Uh, Danny at Utes, Utes Avs fan says no one let the kids grow, even if it means no playoffs. He also then was yelling at Joe Sagic about not getting at the table with John Tavares. So, you know, there's... <laughs> I love my contradictions. I know. I'm sorry, Danny. I just got threw you under the bus there a little bit. It just... <laughs> hey, we're all, we're all riddled with contradictions. We so are. As long as we can admit it and, you know, move, move forward, I'm fine with it. <laughs> uh, then moving forward, Sean McDonald says, I would love Riley Nash to play with Soderberg and Nieto, Calvin DeHaan, and James Neal. First times we heard of Mr. James Neal up here. Another, uh, another Calvin DeHaan and another, how about Paul Stastny? 
lots and lots and lots of stuff. Did I miss anything there? Or you have any other ones on your side? Nope. So there's a lot of, I mean, the, the popular names seem to be JVR, Calvin DeHaan, and Paul Stastny. Right. <laughs> so let's start with, with the, go ahead. Which that's to be expected. Yeah. I mean, those are the ones that I think have come up the most, generally speaking, uh, as far as direct connections to the abs, especially Paul Stastny. So let's go ahead and just jump in with these three guys. There's obviously a lot surrounding Paul Stastny. There's been the whole, basically, there was a, there was a tweet, I don't remember who put it out, that said Stastny is basically deciding between, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of shortening it a little bit here, uh, basically is deciding between Winnipeg and Colorado is where he wants to play. Unsurprisingly, right. Winnipeg wants to keep him. He was he fit in really well with with Winnipeg. Did a lot of really great things. Obviously, had a fantastic playoff run with 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 the Jets. Uh, he does he answers a lot of questions for the Avs. Specifically, dear God, can we ever get a guy that can win a faceoff? Paul Stastny can win those. Uh, he's not obviously he's not exactly the the speediest player, and we he's not a the greatest skater out there, but he's just, I mean, he is one of the smartest players in the league and just, he might not be the fastest guy out there, but he knows how to get to places and how to get the puck to people in places to get the puck in the net. He's just, he's just, he, he, he would make a lot of sense in a lot of ways. And he's got a lot of familiarity with, with the franchise and, He'd be a good mentor for guys like Jost and Kerfoot and Comper. Yep. Now, I mean, in Winnipeg, obviously, they have the space to deal with him this year. There's some, there's certain – both they and the Avs are sitting above $20 million in their cap space. So if they wanted to overpay him, they could. The big issue that's coming up with Winnipeg here is not so much this year, is the following year. Is they're going to have – they've got a bunch of guys to, to – to kind of re up right now, they've got to get Jacob Truba re signed. He's restricted this year. They got to get Josh Morrissey re signed. He's also restricted. They got to get uh, Joel Armia. Not going to be a huge one there. Um, Brand- there's a few other restricted names, but the big ones for the following season are Blake Wheeler, their captain, who will be unrestricted at the end of next season. And then some little guy by the name of Patrick Line, who is going to get a bit of a raise, mm-hmm. a little bit. Honestly, I, I want to get Ranton and uh, Ink to a new contract before Line inks his. Oh, yeah. And don't, don't overlook Kyle Connor. Yep. Kyle Connor could That's be right. due. Kyle pretty Connor's great. due at the end of next year as well. He's, he'll, be, uh, he'll be coming off his ELC. Kyle Connor had a fantastic rookie season this year. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to have some guys that they're going to need to commit some money to. So while they have a bunch of money to play with this year, they can't just throw it at them. Right. They, they've got to be smart about it. And they've got, I mean, they do have a couple of contracts like Tyler Myers and Dmitry Kulikov. Myers comes off the books this year and Kulikov at, Myers comes off the books at the end of this coming year and then Kulikov the year after. And they're both guys that I feel like they'll be replaced at, with other people. I, so, I, I agree, especially with Kulikov. I don't, I mean, I, Tyler Myers has done pretty decently there for them. He's not, I mean, he kind of never really jumped up to that extra level where people kind of thought he would go after his, uh, after his rookie year. And you know, but he's still a he's still a good skating, enormous defenseman with a good shot. So yeah, it's still just a cost benefit analysis for sure, absolutely. And for, I would feel like Winnipeg uses that as a trade chip at the deadline. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's some interesting options there. They, what, what do you think about the ads bringing Stasny back? I'm all for it, guys. Guys, the smartest player, one of the smartest players I've ever seen. He knows how to work with young guys, as he proved in Winnipeg, and wins face-off, plays defense, is a good is a good glue guy in that locker room. Bring him back. I, 
I'd be really cautious about the price tag. Yeah, but that's... five and a half to six. That's... Could bring it back on a three-year deal. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting thing for sure because, I mean, obviously Stastny's coming off a seven million dollar a year contract that he signed when he left the Avalanche to go to Winnipeg, not to Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, St. Louis. Uh, Winnipeg via St. Louis. Uh, <laughs> and when he got to St. Louis, he underperformed. I mean, just to say to say the least, that's... He was also underutilized. I mean, well, I mean, say say what you want, but at the, that the, his numbers are his numbers. The guy, mm-hmm. he went, I mean, 7 million a year, scored 46 points, 49 points, 40 points, and then before he was traded, had another 40 points in St. Louis, and then he added another 13. So he ended last, ended last season with his best of those, of those, of those four years on that contract with 53 points. So Stastny has to be thinking that he's going to be taking a pay cut wherever he goes. Granted, he did have a stellar playoffs, 15 points in 17 games. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. And he would really, Mark Shifley was a little bit shell shocked. It looked like at times in the playoffs, and Stastny really stepped up. Yeah, he, yeah, he was he, he was excellent. There's just no way around it. He was he was excellent. And I think if you can, you may. I, the thing I'm more worried about, I guess, with Stastny is how many years you give him because he's 32. And do take you, him to take him to 35 because after 35 buyouts are really really tougher. That's fair. So you, get, you take take him so give him a three year contract. Yep. See, ah, oh man, that's just that it's th- that extra third year because again, you're some of this. I think I, I especially like the idea of Stastny because he can help the eventual guy who you want to take that two C job. He's not going to be your two C for the next ten years. No, obviously. He's the guy that you mentor, use to mentor your actual centers like Joe Stir Kerfoot. Right. And then you move him down the lineup or whatever. That's, yeah, that's where it becomes tricky, though. I mean, if you're doing it, it's yet three years and you're paying him $6 million. Yeah. Are you basically telling Tyson Jost he's not a center anymore? No, you're actually allowing him to. You're basically putting him on the wing. And allowing him to take more and more responsibility and more and more face-offs and learn that so that when Stastny... How are you actually... That, how is he getting more and more of an opportunity to take a face-off? If Jost and Stastny are on the ice at the same time and it's important that you get possession, who's taking the face-off? Well, initially it'll be Stastny, but over time... And you know how often refs so like it, to throw up players. True. He'll still get his face-off work. I see. I don't see it that. I I I feel like if you're giving Stastny that much time, you're essentially telling Tyson Jost he's not a center. Well, you know when Jack Hughes comes in, <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm not entirely opposed to Tyson Jost being a being a winger. His game will work really well being a center or a winger. In fact, I'm just some of the stuff I'm seeing in like the fit. Mark Martin Cott could be the perfect com- combination with Tyson Jost because they're two. They're both middle six forwards who are defensively responsible but can also score. That's a good combination. I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I do think that the Avs are going to ride ride or die with Tyson Jost and maybe get a center for the bottom six. Yeah. To take more of those defensive zone draws. That could be an interesting. That, that I would, I would, I would like that. I know. I mean, then the other, then the other guy that comes up when you talk about that is JT Comfer, right? Because you want JT him to Comfer, be. A, I feel like he's going to work with Soderberg a lot. Start on that right wing, and because you're going <laughs> to, Bednar likes to have a right-handed face-off guy. Like you saw it with Landeskog and McKinnon. Landeskog took. Quite a few faceoffs because he liked that for the strategy, and Landis got actually wasn't terrible. No, at he it. wasn't terrible at it. Also, McKinnon was really not good at faceoffs. No, about the and, one area that he was not very good this year. And so, I feel like you're going to do the same thing with 
with Confer and um, Soderberg that Confer is going to be, take about half the draws. Yeah. So, and I feel like that with um, Soderberg and Nieto, that's a pretty good lineup line that you throw out there that can shut down and nice energy. That's that's where I see it. And then Soderberg's contract is coming up to the end, and by the end you want you want Comfer to take the that spot. Yeah, true. Soderberg has two more seasons left on his deal. He'll be up at the end of not this coming season, but the next season, end of twenty twenty. And at the end of this season, it becomes a lot easier to move if you want to. Oh, he still has a modified no trade clause. Right, but it's easier for him to move. Yeah. Like, teams would be more interested in him. Yeah, that's true. Paying that last year. As long as he keeps, as long as his, his play keeps up. That's an inter- I mean, there's a lot of. A lot of there's a lot of things to try to balance as we go through. Yeah, this is all about developing players while also remaining competitive. That's the quandary the ads are going to be in. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, well, goodness, you. got a lot of coughs. I got a lot of coughs going on here. My bad. Uh, so let's well, see. What's the, who's in the, so we, t- we hear about Paul Stastny? I think I think in general a lot of us agree that Stastny would be a good addition. Don't keep him here for too long because obviously you don't want to go with that whole old guy route again. The the thing that's going to be tough with him is going to be the the years to give him. Um, another name that is coming up a lot that we've mentioned before and that apparently, according to um, according to BSN, the Avalanche have at least made contact with him. Whatever that ends up meaning, uh, it's James Van Riemsdyk. See, I'm all for this guy. I, I initially was against, but I've moved away. I, I've moved on to the idea there. The only thing that really makes me pause is the cost. Yeah, the cost like, is certainly going to be. He's going to push $6 million if you really want him. But he scored 36 goals last year. And he's been a pretty consistent at or above 30-goal scorer, scorer for a while. And, I mean, he's he plays, he's played um, 80, 82, had one season where he only played 40 games, 82, 81. So he's played, he, he's been good about staying healthy. And, I mean, his goal rates and everything is, his Corsi is uh, through the roof. It's really nice. Yeah, we were just looking at that before. His his Corsi four percentage for the two thousand seventeen two thousand eighteen season was sixty one point nine percent. That and it, just to kind of give you the, the 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 feel for that Corsi measures pucks directed to the net, shot you know whether whether they're blocked whether they missed whether they get on net all of it. While you're on the ice, they take the ones that happen for you while you're on the ice versus the ones that happen against you. And so you take the grand total of, of all of those things, you divide and you, you get a percentage based off of the ones that you put toward your team puts toward the net while you're on ice. And that percentage uh, gives you your course percentage. So if it were 50 50, that means exactly the same amount of pucks. Uh, are going towards your offense, the the offensive net, as are going towards your defensive net. So he's uh, and so fifty is about the break even. You usually want to be right around there. If you're fifty three to fifty five, you're doing pretty darn well. Sixty two percent is freakish. And he's if you the yeah, other really looking to get maybe a little bit bigger while not losing speed, this is your guy. Yeah. The only other guy you'd consider here would be James Neal. And James Neal's three years older, but would also probably come cheaper. And he just did play in the Stanley Cup final. Yes, he for did. Part of the yes, he did. And it was interesting because I, I was I was trying to look at uh, common line mates here. Uh, his his most common line mates were uh, Connor Brown and Tyler Bozak this past year. 
the second closest common line that mates were Tyler Bozak and Mitch Marner. So Mitch Marner obviously is going to improve anybody on the ice because he's a stellar player. Tyler Bozak, not so much. And and see, this will just be better when we trade trade for Marner, like like Heather said. There you so go, right? <laughs> line mate. And then you put Andrew Ghetto there, and wow, that's a scoring line. And it should be noted that... Oh, maybe it wasn't. I was reading something different. Yes. I thought. I, I'm sorry. I thought I saw something where his uh, Van Riemsdyk's. No, oh, that's the wrong guy. That might be why. Yeah, there it is. He was heavily, and uh, and has been throughout his time in Toronto, has heavy duty ozone starts, like seventy percent. That's fine. He'd be on the line that would do that anyway. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, you're going to be playing. You're, you're playing on a scoring line. Granted, with Tyler, Bo- you're looking with Tyler for Bozak. a Skog type guy on a not McKinnon line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly right. That's a perfect way to put it. I I love the idea of James Van Riemsdyk. I remember I remember writing things years ago, suggesting about like potential trade targets for the Avalanche, and always going, take a look at James Van Riemsdyk. Uh, I I I I love him. I think he again price is going to be the thing. Are you going to be? Are you gonna, are you going to want to go? Are you going to want to match what some teams are probably going to throw his way because he's had a lot of good years in a row, which means you're probably going to have to not only give him a decent chunk of change, but you're going to have to give him term. In six, five, four, five, six years, that's what I would do. Whew. Throwing that chunk of change. I mean, he's only 27, so you're essentially buying the prime years of his contract. That's very true. That's, That's very true. Exactly. I, if if he signs anything less than five years, he's got bad advice from his agent. No, I'd agree with that. This is this, a, this is his time to make his this money. This is the contract you cash in. Yeah. No, I agree completely. This you, is... Statistics show you most likely will not get another contract like it again. I agree. I agree. I like the idea. If, if I mean, I know the Avs do have room to play, but again, they, they've got to start looking ahead as well. We've mentioned we mentioned with Winnipeg that they had some big names that they've got to come up to re-sign. The Avs are going to be there too, and they, we mentioned Miko Rantanen is going to be re- need needing a new contract, and then of course Nikita Zadorov needs a new contract. Those are the well, biggest that names. Together, it's going to be about ten million. That's that's easy to fit under the cap. What's that? that? That together is going to be about ten million. That's going to be easy to fit under the cap. Right. And then, Granted, yes, and neither you of really those to sign your other younger guys. You've got Soderberg's contract coming off the books. That's very true. Uh, they have a bit more flexibility, it looks like, than, than than Winnipeg does. But nonetheless, they still got it. They can't just. They, we, they've got to make sure they're 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 planning. And frankly, they've got five and five point nine million dollars coming off the books that is not going to be there next year. So. Very true. That, that's Varley, just so you know. Yeah, if Varley's back, he's not back at that price. That's day, very so. true. It'll be it'll be much less. Uh, let's see. And then one other guy that has been coming up a lot. So I mean, we we like both Stasny and JVR. I feel I kind of feel like it'll be more likely one than the other. As opposed to as more likely one than both, I yeah, should say. It's all about whether you, the Avs want to get a center or a winger. Yeah. Do they want to get a center to move Tyson Jost to wing, or do they want to get a winger to help Tyson to give Tyson Jost someone to pass to? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> then the third guy that all, that came up a lot, and a lot of people seem to make uh, make seem to be making a decent fit, is defenseman Calvin DeHaan. Yeah, has... I keep hearing his, his name enough, and people seem to love his game enough. It would probably push <coughs> push probably Sam Gerrard down to the bottom pairing. Now, did, was altogether he, bad? Was he injured this year? Uh, I believe so. Okay, I was I was just wondering because I'm looking at his numbers, and he's got 33 games this year, so that that seems to state uh, injury. Yeah. He had a pretty rough year, and uh, yeah, the Islanders is kind of a hole did. Now, just again looking at his, looking at his numbers, 
I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not crazy about everything I'm looking at here. Uh, yes, yeah, most... crazy about him, but at the same point, he's he holds, he treads water when yeah. he's out on the ice. Well, his Corsi percentage is 43. Mm. So the that's... ones I'm seeing here are about 50, 49. Well, of course, so, I mean, for his season this year, which, again, was only 33 games, I see uh, Corsi 4 percentage, 43.4. Last season, 45.1. Season before, 46.3. Season before, 49.6. Season before, 51. So he's been trending gradually in the downward direction, it appears. Yeah. Uh, With his relative Corsi doing the same thing, he's at minus 8.6. Yeah, I'm not in love with him. If I was to sign him, it would be to actually anchor a bottom pairing. Yeah. And I'm sure I want to spend the money on that. But I feel like there's enough there that makes me... I've done my research there, and I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Now, Grant, I haven't seen him... seen a lot of him, uh, really, at all. <laughs> Excuse me. I know that... Um, I, I know that... Uh, there's been a, I mean, there's been more than a few folks that have really hoped that the Avs would have had him, you know, since he was drafted, uh, and you know that's that's fine. Again, his numbers are kind of his goal, his scoring numbers are also kind of kind of meh. As I recall, he was supposed to be kind of more of a two way guy. He seems to be much less that than he has ever before. Granted, uh, again, he is, his this season he was cut short by by injury. Uh, season ago, he had 25 points, and that's his career high. Five goals, twenty assists, both career highs. So, I mean, kind of in that, kind of much more of a much more of a defensive, defensive defenseman type of type of numbers. Yep, I uh, totally agree. Yep, I, I'm. I wouldn't hate it, but I wouldn't love it. Yeah, I mean, again, not having really seen him play, I can't really. The, the eye, I don't really have much as far as the eye test is concerned for him. Uh, so all I have to go on there is numbers, and they don't really excite me that much. So, yeah, take that for whatever you will. <laughs> so let's see here. We did have a voice call. Do you want to give that a go right now, or should we wait on that? Um. Well, is there a player that we haven't mentioned that you're interested in? Well, those are the three that we talked about that we that that we were that kind of fall into the. High on, high on the high on the priority, or seem like they're a really strong fit, uh, or have been mentioned several times in some way, shape, or form as being connected with the Avalanche. Um, I don't. Really, it's, it's, I have a couple guys to uh, that I sort of guys I kind of have my eye on, whether or not anybody else does. Yeah, I, I have a few myself. <laughs> why don't you why don't you go for that? Well, we talked about uh, getting a center. And this guy really impressed me during the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Jay Beagle. He's he's just very very solid in his own right. Very solid in his own end. He doesn't he doesn't do you don't hear his name called a lot except on the penalty kill. And he's he's thirty two, going to be thirty three in October. He, I mean, he's coming off a very fairly pedestrian twenty-two points. Um, I mean, he he's fairly pedestrian, but he's all I, I actually really his faceoff percentages are. I mean, he won fifty-eight point five percent of his faceoffs yeah. last year, and then. It, his possession, his course is down at 40, which is kind of odd. But it would be nice to get a guy who could win that face off right off the bat. I love it. Loved him on penalty kill. I love skating. He starts in the D zone 75% of the time. So it's it, that's your defensive fourth line center that you would pay a little bit more for. But I'm okay with that. And by pay a little more, I mean like two million. Yeah. Just because I don't think the Avs have that on their roster. 
And since he's 32, you sign him to a three-year contract that brings him to 35, and you're done with him. And by that time, you hopefully have a guy to replace him. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a guy that, that is heavy, like his, that has his job cut out for him. He had 80.1% 80, 80. defensive zone starts. <laughs> and in the playoffs, he won 60.1% of the faceoffs. Yeah. And like you said, good faceoff percentage. Um his points aren't staggering for sure. The the I mean they're 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 as you said are pretty pedestrian. Strangely enough though, twenty two points is the second most in his the second most he's had in his career. So he's like to light the world on fire, but he's gonna Yeah. I mean he's gonna play about fifteen minutes a night for you and be, that fifteen minutes is gonna be re it's gonna kind of rest yeah. his play. I mean fifteen if you take a lot of penalties. I mean he's been averaging Anywhere between twelve and fourteen minutes, basically, basically his whole time in the league, with a few, with some, with a little bit less earlier in his career, but from about two thousand twelve on, he's given you about twelve to th- twelve to fourteen minutes of ice a night, and they're obviously challenging minutes, penalty kill, defensive zone, and the guy can win you, the guy can win you important faceoffs. I almost like this plan a little bit better than Paul Stastny, <laughs> personally. It would come cheaper, that's it for sure. It certainly would come cheaper. And it would bring every all of the defensive and the stuff away from the puck that you would want at Stastny, with, but you wouldn't get any of the puck yeah. skills. And, you know, and it kind of allows you the – it also kind of allows you the to to give the, give guys like Jost and Comfer those times to be uh, – to get the actual in-game face-offs that, that you would want to give them while still sheltering them, knowing that you've got a guy that you can throw out in the defensive zone any time. And, and still feel pretty good about it. And that, yeah. kind of, that also kind of then solidifies Soderberg as your three, three C, uh, and yeah, you got your second. You got a, you got a good you got a good uh, you got a good uh, couple of guys you can go take out fa- take face offs for you on the penalty kill too. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. So again, a guy that I like. And I know Aaron doesn't. He has already said he doesn't. He doesn't move the needle for him. I like Michael Grabner. I've liked Michael Grabner for a long time. Uh, the guy, the guy, just he does. He's he's a he's a he's a winger for one, so he can give you a good bottom six winger. That 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 kills penalties very well. He's always on a penalty kill wherever he goes. That uh, also gives you that extra. That extra threat, shorthanded because he is incredibly fast. He's a great skater, and the guy. I mean, again, the guy's had twenty-seven goals the last two. Or, yeah, last two seasons. He doesn't get a lot of assists, but that's okay. You know, he's the, 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 he's still getting he's still getting the puck in there. I don't know. I just I feel he. Yeah, I feel like he's a good. Bottom six guy, you can put on the power on the penalty kill. If you all, he also has a he also, he's also got a good shot. So if if a guy goes down and you need someone to to slip to, to slip in on the second power play unit, he can do that. I don't know. The guy, he just he 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 presents an interesting option for me. He's not going to be a guy that you're going to have out there in, in uh, probably in crazy situations, but he's a guy that can also he, that can also create some offense for you. But I also look at his totals. He's he scored on sixteen point seven, sixteen, about sixteen percent of his shots the last two years. When his career average is running about twelve, so for me that says there's a bit of regression. So instead of twenty seven goals, he'll get you twenty three. Uh, regress it back. That's or probably 20. closer to twenty. Yeah. From again Which a bottom six, terrible, a bottom six guy, either a bottom six guy, twenty goals. You're dancing in the streets if a bottom six guy is giving you twenty goals. Yeah, but it, these the, the moments he's getting here, he's playing it on the second line usually. That not not according to his minutes totals. He had like thirteen minutes of thirteen fourteen minutes of ice a game. I would anticipate that would have been more, especially with the penalty killing he was doing. He just total I last so season. So very much opposed to him. He doesn't drive possession. He doesn't. Uh, he shoots fine, but 
I just don't. There isn't a whole lot that makes me go, yeah. 1450 of ice last year per game, 1406 year before, 1428. He's always been. He's always been about a 14 minute of ice a night guy. Third line, essentially. Yeah. That just. I'm. I'm not for it. I can't get excited for it. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. You're allowed to be wrong. It's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. We don't have to figure out which of us is wrong. That's true. So, yeah, that's why, I mean, Michael, Gra- he, Michael Grabner, for me, just, there, it's, there's a lot of really intriguing things about him. And I feel, it's, especially he play, he can fill a right wing for a few years. I know he's kind of been a journeyman a- around the league. After he spent, I mean, he spent the most of his career with the Islanders and before going to Toronto, then to the Rangers, and then he was traded to the Devils in recent years. So he's, I mean, he's been around the block, but he's never been that type of guy that people are like, like that that are, is constantly moving because teams just can't find out what to do with him. He's that guy that comes come camp, somebody always needs what he has to offer, so he always has a job. Just. Pushing thirty, I, I'm, he slowed down just a little bit. Oh, you're so. just looking for it right now. Uh, really? He <laughs> he was he's actually starting to slow down, and you're heading into the point at which guys' legs start to slow down a little bit. I'm really, I'd have to be cautious about the cost and the term. Sure, he's not a guy that you're going to give five years to. Right. No way. That's I not going to I mean, do anything over three and a half million. There's, there's, not, there's no way he's going to get any type of like five year grant. But again, he's due coming off two years in a row of 27 goals and 27 goals. Granted, he knows he seems he's not he's also not going to he's he's not going to come into the avalanche and expect to be a second line player. There's I don't, I don't think at any play at any place uh, he would go this year, these years that he would come in and expect to be a second second line player and to be paid as such. Uh, but he's he's got a skill set that is obviously desirable to to teams in the NHL, and that he can that he can contribute, and he's proven that he can contribute year after year after year. And especially since he's he he, he specializes in p- killing penalties, that's the thing I think I- that you 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 can't really you can't really overlook too well because he kills penalties and he kills them well. Yeah, keep him at three million. Maybe I get on board. Sure, That's I'm not. Just, I don't think you go. I mean, I don't think you go anywhere, anywhere over, like if you if you over if three point five at the top, at the absolute top, and that's if he's holding out and making it real difficult on you. But if yeah, you're getting I anywhere near four million, I'm this, much. and I I think the guy that I want, he's also polarizing. I don't want him so much as I'm a little bit intrigued by him, uh, Patrick Maroon, just as a big that is interesting. Coach on the bottom six. You don't really think much of Maroon. Really about anything. <clears throat> you really don't think much, but he actually does a pretty good job as a disruptor. He'll go into the dirty areas. He's he's a bit of an agitator in him. He's There isn't anything really special there, but there is also isn't it. He's a guy that's trying, trying to uh, repair his image. Or his value, because he was awful in Edmonton, and so was everyone else. So I'd be interested in poking around at him. I wouldn't poke too hard, but That's if so the Avs are really looking to get some size, he had twenty. Yeah, he's another guy who had twenty-seven goals last year. Not this last year, but the year before, the year they made the playoffs. Was that? Did he? Did he end up playing with Connor McDavid a lot that year? Yes. Randomly. Well, that explains that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, so. I think no. His let's see what was his shooting percentage of that year. That sound a lot. It actually, it actually dipped, but he. That's interesting. So there is some value there as a as a goal scorer, but I liked what he did in Anaheim better than. And that's gosh, long while ways away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I liked him better when he was like a grinder type player on Anaheim than the maligned goal scorer that he wasn't. Yeah, I mean, fifteen point percent was still a career high for him that year. 
Yeah. Every other year, he's right around, it looks like, more like 11%. I, yeah, I think more and more that I'm looking at this, I, I'd i almost go put all your chips on Van Riemsdyk. Maybe you get a defenseman like DeHaan or Tobias Engstrom. And then just keep your keep everything in front of you. Yeah. Because the future of your franchise is already on. You're just looking to augment them. Yeah. No, I agree with that completely. And it's about how much do you how much do you want to insulate them? How much growth do you want them to exhibit? How do you get that to come about? That's really that's really where I am. I I'm very cautious. Stastny is about the only one that I really look at about signing guys over 30. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Stastny, I mean, I, I I think you're right. I think, I, I really think the the guy to target is, is JVR. If you're going yeah, to, as far said, as your big money guy. Yeah. Coming into this, I would have said the opposite. Like, Oh, he's too expensive to not work. But you know what? Actually, I moved toward do it. You have the money to spend. It won't won't hamstring you as long as you don't throw out a no-movement clause, <laughs> which that'll be tough. But Right. You know, if, if things are going right with him, he's a guy you're going to protect anyways in the next expansion draft. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. But I just don't want to be ham- hamstrung. Say he blows out a knee, and you have to protect him. For sure, <laughs> that would be un- that would be bad mm-hmm. for all parties. So let's see. Are there any th- now? Let's talk about some guys that you would say beware, beware, stay away from at all costs. Um. Well, Mike Green. <laughs> yeah, Mike Green is. What, it's odd. The, the, I think there's one that we were both talking about earlier before we hit record, that unfortunately the Avalanche have also been reported to as having interest in is Tyler Bozak. Yeah, hard pass. Hard Hard pass. pass. Hardest of hard passes. Even if they give that second round that's always been offered with him. (laughs) Yeah, hard, 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 hard pass. He's just, I mean, you talk about a guy who's definitely, I mean, if you got a choice between two 32-year-old guys, you you, you don't choose Tyler Bozak. You choose Paul Stastny. <laughs> you, you know, I'm doing a lot of research here. This name popped up. He wasn't qualified by the Sharks. He's 25 years old. Dylan DeMello. I I liked watching him. He's he's a defenseman, right? Shoots right, 6'1", 200. I would not be opposed to signing him to a, to a contract. The, the Sharks had his rights, but they didn't qualify him. Right. So he's now an unrestricted free agent. At 25, that's exactly what you would look for. I'm really interested in him. That'd be inter- that'd be a, you know, a guy to, to take a look at for sure. I was before when it sounded like the Red Wings weren't going to qualify, or, or they, they I guess they did, they weren't going to qualify Martin Frick, but then they went and re-signed him. I was like, oh, jump all over that guy. Yeah, the Red Wings knew what they were doing. They, they didn't qualify so they could sign him to. They weren't tied to the last contract. Stupid Red Wings. Why they got to do that to me? Yeah, so, I, I mean, Tyler Bozak for sure. I'd say stay away from him big time. Um, basically, like you said, basically anybody over 30 with with very few exceptions mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to just steer clear of. Uh, we were looking, and uh, Nick Holden is. <laughs> See, you beat it, beat me to him. He's <coughs> he's signed a five year contract with Pittsburgh, or at least he's rumored to. Jack Johnson would have stayed far away from him. So as hopefully, far luckily, as yeah. could. luckily we could, you know, I've all, have that already have been done for us. So thanks for yeah, that, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pittsburgh. Who, who knows why on earth? Uh, knows why on earth you would go for that? Oh man. <laughs> um, do you have any other guys you would steer clear of for sure, no matter what? Ian Cole. That, that guy's got a lot of mileage on him. He's 29. Oh, and he's only 29. And the Alex Burrows, stay away from him. 
Oh, gosh. Anyone who came out of Ottawa, <laughs> stay, stay away. I'm not bringing any toxicity into my locker room, and that for sure that was a cesspool. I agree completely. Right on. I don't know. See here, I think you gotta. We gotta look at. I, I, let's take a take a stab at what like the most ideal free agency day would look like for the Avalanche. Um, James Van Riemsdyk extends the door up in Rantanen, and then sit back. Yeah, I'll say James Van Riemsdyk, I'm with you there. Extend extend Rantanen, extend Zadorov, and I like I like going and grabbing Jay Beagle. I like yeah, I, I think that's a great option. Okay that. Then fill out your AHL team because you got some filling out to do. So there's there's some different guys um that they drafted that could fill it out. So I mean yeah, they'll need to sign a few people, but not as many people as I thought they would have to. At least forwards, what? Defense, forwards, they're fine. Yeah. It's, yeah. They probably might want to have one other goalie in there to right. be part of that. Um, obviously, of course, the Avalanche announced that they have an ECA. Their ECHL affiliate is going to be the Utah Grizzlies. So that's kind of kind of a neat thing to keep them back in the family because, of course, before they were the Utah Grizzlies, they were the Denver Grizzlies. Aww. And then the Avalanche came to town and said, GTFO, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna Reunited, take and it feels so good. Exactly. So now it's all back into family. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of, a, it's kind of a neat thing. Kind yep. of a neat thing. Well, let's make sure we get Spencer's voicemail out here because he did call. So I'm still waiting to see if Louie's going to drop us a line here. He hasn't yet, though. So Here is Spencer. Hey, guys. It's Spencer. I am at MacWinning on Twitter. It's McKinnon with a W instead of a K. Really easy. Thanks for taking my voicemail last week. It was uh, fun to hear you discuss it. And, yeah, by all means, that's not feasible, nor is it realistic. It's just fun. You know, it'd probably be like an NBA model, but with like a it's like a playoff-style tournament for those teams that don't make the playoffs, and that's why I thought it was fun. It's like, hey, okay, your offseason, instead of starting now, you have the possibility of playing four more games of hockey and then adding a, a guy onto your roster next year via the draft. That'd be pretty sweet. It's a pretty sweet gig, because when, you know, players get hyped when they know they're getting other players that are good. So, it's a fun thing for them. Anyways, my question is, um, you know, we're, we're not hearing a lot out of Joe from free agency. Um, so you probably got to expect that he doesn't do anything or does very little, you know. Um, I guess my question would be, when do you see Joe making a move? You know, really when? When between July 1st and September 1st, like, or September 25th? Who knows? You know, because, like, you know, it, it's kind of hard. I feel like our defense – it's set right now, but McCarr is probably going to be on the team by, like, late March at the, you know, latest. And Timmons could push for the opening right roster, you know. So, in that case, a D-man's probably got to go. he got to move one. So, um, you know, maybe wonder who it is. And, uh, you know, I guess I'm a king of hot takes for this. I'd rather move EJ before I would move Barry. But I understand why Barry will be moved first just because he's more valuable to the rest of the league than he is. And that kind of stinks because McCarr and Barry and Z and Gerard all on one blue line. Man. And not even, that's not even mentioning Timmons. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. All right. Love you guys. Can't wait to hear the pod. Have fun. All right, Spencer, thank you for the call again if you want to give a call to the burgundy brigade hotline you can give us a call at 720-477-3762 and we'll get you on the on the podcast so there's a lot to kind of digest there uh again (laughs) spencer's been spencer's been giving us some very uh detailed phone calls which is awesome um what to do what when do we expect for joe to, to be making moves i imagine because you, you're right, it has been kind of eerily quiet around the Avalanche recently. Uh, we're certainly not the only people to be noticing that. BSN has been talking about that a lot, about how the Avs have been very hush-hush about their intentions for the offseason this, this 
time around, uh, whereas they've been pretty open about it last couple of years. Um, I kind of, I mean, it's kind of a silly thing to say, but I kind of feel like we're going to, we're going to know about the moves as soon as he makes them. And that's usually how it is. I mean, coming up on November, we were preparing for the abs to face the Islanders and then head to Sweden. What did we, what was Joe preparing to do? Trade Matt Duchesne. Granted, there have been, there had been for eons at that point. All of this talk, they've you know they're gonna they're listening to offers for Matt Duchesne. They're listening to offers for Matt Duchesne. Joe Sackick isn't moving yet. What is Joe Sackick did? Blah blah blah. blah all that stuff. Right, but it's when the moves happen, they'll come out of nowhere, and then we'll be like, "Well, that was weird," and then we'll love them. Yeah. And as for Macar, I mean, you're 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 right. I think there's a very strong and almost almost un deniable possibility barring something really bad happening with Makar that he'll most likely be joining the roster in, in March once, once UMass's season is done. Or he signs an ATO and goes down to Loveland and plays there. Or a little column A and a little column B. Uh, my guess, <coughs> my guess would be he signs an amateur tryout offer and then um, plays there. And then assuming Everything works out nicely, and the Avs are in playoff position. The Avs signed him officially after that because the contract won't kick in during the playoffs, and he'll start. Well, I think there's rules about that that you have to have them signed officially by a specific date, or else they are not eligible to play in the playoffs. I don't, well, I don't I know exactly what that, that is. But um, Makar, you're not going to move any of your defensemen unless it's a really, really great offer. Yeah. And I'm talking in the realm of getting Eric Carlson great. <laughs> right. Getting a signed Eric Carlson great. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm... And as you say, it's going it's to be Tyson Berry. Tyson Berry's going to be the guy that's going to be moved. I think that's just... Yeah. Uh, and and obviously you say it's a, you understand why and I, I get it, and you're you're not wrong um, that he's he's going to be the guy and it's more though it's more than just the fact that he has that he probably has more value to the NHL to other NHL teams because let's I mean if you're gonna he's he's going to be that guy that can get you fifty to sixty points and that's just really hard to put a price on for sure there's definitely a ton of value that goes like that but the other part about that is that. You mention you you mentioned in the phone call you get Makar, Gerard, and Barry at in the same blue line, and while that certainly makes a lot of people go ooh offensive, pre, pretty offensive stuff, that should also make you go ooh that's a lot of smaller defensemen in the defensive zone. And you're not going to move. You Zadorov is going to be your top anchor the top end of your defense for the next while at least on the left side you are not going to move Eric Johnson because he's just too big in the room he's he's so so critical for that leadership yeah and then it, it's going to be Barry and my guess would be it's going to be at the draft next year yeah. that you see him moved. And that'll be and a tough thing, like obviously. It. He's Because, again, you talk about the room. Barry is is another guy that's great in that room, and he and McKinnon are, are best friends and, you know, all, yeah, all that. And there's certainly going to be an upset at the same point of that. It's just you gotta ha- you're going to have to – Sackick's going to have to handle that kind of carefully. And maybe maybe we have this all – maybe this is going to be all wrong, and we'll, we'll come down the line and we'll see – that all of those things add up. They they they've decided that instead of instead of trading Barry, they're going to have one of these younger guys that they can trade out in order to obtain somebody else that they want to bring that they want to bring bring in uh, offensively. Yeah, I mean, imagine you could get someone like Marner for it, or something like that. You get a top top line legitimate scoring winger. That's the kind of deal you're looking at. Yeah. So I mean, there's still all kinds of options. It, it, you know, well, <laughs> how many people saw Seth Jones going for, for Ryan Johansson one-for-one one when it happened? 
right? It's no, and, or, you know, hey, Martin Erad for Philip Forsberg. Right. <laughs> right, uh, right. So, yeah, I guess that, uh, for, you know, Adam Larson. I mean, if that's, if yeah. that's the deal, God, gosh. Oh, seriously, no joke. Trade a Stamkos, we'll put him on McKinnon's wing. <laughs> Absolutely. Right on. Well, um, I don't know. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about. Happy Canada Day for everyone That's on right. Sunday. Also, first day of free agency. First day of free agency. Always a good day and to celebrate Canada Day. And happy birthday, America. Now, maybe get your stuff together. Yeah, you know. They've, already, they've been going on. America's been on a bit of a bender for a while, so hopefully it'll sober up <laughs> here real quick. Yep. <laughs> Right on. Good everyone, happy birthday to America. Enjoy the fireworks. Enjoy the have a have a beer and toast everything you love. Indeed, indeed. So then, uh, you're all twenty one. It's well, yes, or yeah, yes. Assuming you're all twenty one. Uh, so there we go. Thanks again for sticking around with the, with us on the uh, Burgundy Brigade podcast. We will probably do another one of these. You know, I don't know, a little bit of time after here. It's per- July is probably not going to be nearly as active as we were in June. It's been, like I said, it's been as active as we've been in quite a while. There was a lot to talk about, uh, a lot of fun I stuff. I don't know. To we could do podcasts breaking down the Avs third line right wing. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's no off season for talking avalanche hockey. You're not wrong. There is absolutely no off season for talking avalanche hockey. Okay, we're not going to bury it in the dirt, though. We're We're going <laughs> to... We're we're not going to beat you over the head with it. We'll <laughs> no. be nice. No, we will. So we'll we'll have another one probably in a week or two uh, to sort of review any moves that the Avalanche have or haven't made necessarily with the with the with things and you know talk about some of the other big deals that have been happening and hopefully hopefully witness the continued uh, falling apart of Ottawa so that we can get the best possible draft pick at the end of next season and yeah so. Make sure you give us a follow on the social medias. I am at BRG Brigade Kevin. He is at Avalangelist. You can find the podcast on podbean.com. Uh, you can also find the uh, podcast on iTunes. You can subscribe to us there and listen to us whenever you like. Uh, again, the hotline number is 720-477-3762. Give us a call anytime and let us know what you're thinking avalanche-wise, and we will get you on the podcast And yeah, so have a good one, ladies and gents. Happy Canada Day. Happy 4th. And we will talk to you later.